Right, and if you wanted the outline, it's on Angel. You couldn't find it? Chapter 2? Outline? Yeah, I just said it wouldn't download. It wouldn't download? Oh, that's because you put your cursor over top of the blue text. You can't put your cursor over the blue text. So we, we don't get a notepad. If you print it out, you can't have it. It's available to you. No. No. Okay, Dalton's Atomic Theory. So Dalton, John Dalton, was an English school teacher, like from England, not an English school teacher. He was a science teacher in England. And he... And he um, came up with this, the atomic theory. He first theorized about the atoms, and he's the parts of his theory. Now, most of these we still consider true. Some of them we consider incorrect now. Um, but and we've just modified it a little bit for the modern theory. Uh, but the first part was elements are composed of extremely small particles called atoms. And atoms cannot be divided. Do you guys agree with this? No. The first part, there could extremely po extremely small particles called atoms, yes, but atoms can be divided into uh, protons, neutrons, electrons, and even smaller down than that, and that's what an atomic bond is. It's dividing an atom. It's releasing energy stored in an atom. So that part has been modified. Um, all atoms of a given element are identical having the same size, mass, and chemical properties. The atoms of one element are different from atoms of all other elements. Do you agree with that? No. All atoms of a given element are identical. No. All, no. I agree. So we have what? Ions, Ions and isotopes. Yep. Isotopes have different numbers of neutrons, so they don't have the same size and mass. They have the same chemical properties, but not the same mass. Uh, so that one's just been modified a little bit. Um, compounds are composed of atoms of more than one element. In any compound, the ratio of the number of atoms of any two of the elements present, present is either an integer or a simple fraction. Do you agree with that? Yes, so we pretty hold that one true still. Um, and it's always like H2O, it's never H2.5O or something like that. It's always integers, okay? Um, and then a chemical reaction involves the separation, combination, or rearrangement of atoms and does not result in their creation or destruction. True, yes. The law of conservation of mass. Mass is neither created nor destroyed. And from his theory, there are also two other laws, not just the law of conservation of mass. But the law of definite proportion is um, a compound always contains the same proportion of elements. So what you're looking at is within the same compound, water is always H2O. Water is never made up of H3O. Okay, it's always the same proportion of, el of elements. So you're looking within the same compound and law of multiple proportions. You're looking at two different compounds composed of the same atoms, like carbon monoxide versus carbon dioxide, um, the masses are ratios of small whole numbers. So you'll have like two to one ratios of masses. So this is showing the law of multiple proportion where carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, so the oxygen to carbon ratio is one to one, two to one, and then also if you looked at oxygen to oxygen, it's one to two and one to one ratios for carbon to carbon. So that's a lot of multiple proportions. You're, compi you're comparing two different molecules. We're and here's the law of conservation of mass, where we have the same amount of atoms um, before. So this is supposed to be A is before the reaction, and then B would be the same if you counted up all the red and green spheres, it would be the same. 
Okay, so very early when scientists were looking at the atom, they were looking at the different properties of the atom, and one of the instruments they used was called the cathode ray tube, and J.J. Thompson uh, was using this cathode ray tube and found uh, that, well, actually, he found that there is a ray, so there's a stream of particles that was produced, and that stream of particles, can I, I'm going to look at this here, yeah. So it's going from the cathode to the anode. When it passed through um, a magnet, the positive or negatively charged plate, um, the, the ray was attracted here to the positive. This isn't very easy to read. Let me just rewrite it. draw a picture. So it's going through, but let's say we have this stream of particles. I bet you can't see that color. Going in this direction. If you put a positive plate here, that stream is actually attracted upwards. Okay, so it would bend upwards. And if you put a negative plate here, it was repelled. So if it there was a negative plate here. Instead, it was repelled. So what he was able to do is determine the charge. Well, the charge must be negative, but he was able to measure with the cathode ray tube the charge to electron mass. And they found a big C is a coulomb. So it's negative, meaning it has a negative charge, coulombs per gram. You guys don't need to know that number. It's just a charge to mass. And then Millikan was able to find the charge of an electron. Um, his experiment looked like this. He had an um, oil drop experiment where he had an atomizer. He has little tiny uh, droplets of oil, and it passed through charged plates through this hole. And he was able to measure the rate of fall of those oil drops based on if it had one or two charges, one or two electrons on it. So they were looking at very small um, droplets and it was fought, measuring the rate of fall. So based on his information and J.J. Thompson's information, you can combine those two to find the mass of an electron is 9.8, 9 9.10 times 10 to the negative 28th. What does that negative 28 mean? It's a really small number. So it is so small um, compared to protons and neutrons that when you take the mass of an atom, the electron isn't, it's not included in the mass. It's so small. Okay, so that's how they discovered the electron. What's the other? Protons and neutrons. So the protons was the next to be discovered. Um, I guess here the cathode rays cause glass and metals to emit x-rays and there's three different types of these rays. Um, alpha rays, which are positively charged particles, beta rays, which are negatively charged, they're electrons, and gamma rays, which are high energy ra rays with no charge. So this little symbol right here is an alpha, so you see alpha rays, the Greek symbol, beta, electrons. So what is a alpha ray probably made up of? Protons, because it's positively charged. And this is the symbol for gamma. Okay. Yeah, you can see. Gamma ray is no charge. Yeah. Um, so Thompson made this model of the atom because he was studying the electrons. He said, um, well, they knew atoms were neutral, and so they knew there had to be a positive to balance out the negative, and he said that there is a positive charge that went all over the sphere of an atom, and then there were just negatively charged particles mixed in there. Sometimes this is called the plum pudding model, because it's like there's a big bowl of pudding with little plums or raisins or something mixed in there. I think plum pudding used to be more common back then. Isn't there a nursery rhyme with plum pudding? Or a song? What's a song or something? Christmas song? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
So Rutherford challenged this model, and he um, went on a search to find the, where these positive par particles were located. And he did this experiment that's called the gold foil experiment. So he bombarded gold foils with alpha particles, and alpha particles had what charge? Positive. positive. So um, a majority went straight through. So most of these particles went straight through. Now, if the atom was completely filled with a positive charge, what should happen to those particles? It should come back. If, if Thompson's theory or model was correct, when it hit the, mo um, the positively charged atom, it should come straight back to you. But most of them went straight through. Only some were deflected, and very, very few actually bounced back. So this is a quote that they say Rutherford said, it was as incredible as if you had fired a 15-inch shell at a piece of tissue paper and it came back and hit you. So these were very unexpected results, and so he used those results to ch challenge Thompson's model, and he came up with his own model. So this is what it kind of looked like. They have a screen that's able to see where the uh, particles hit, and it goes through the gold foil. Most of them went straight through, very few were deflected back. So his model is showing that there's a dense positive core of the atom and most of it is empty space and that most of these atoms were able to pass through or most of these particles were able to pass through the atom and very few that were able to hit or be deflected by that nucleus which he called the nucleus um, yeah concentrated in the nucleus and he called those protons and they have the same charge of electrons and you can see the mass, even though the mass is still very small, it's 1,840 times larger than an electron. So it's a lot larger than an electron. Um, I think your book has a picture of if you make the atom as large as a football stadium, the nucleus is the size of a marble in the middle. So it's very, very small compared to the rest of the atom. And I think that's it. That's all the notes we're going to take. So grab your clicker. Click. We'll see how much you remember. We need to move the desk over. It's getting a little crowded over there. The desk is getting a little... The neutron was actually the last particle discovered. Why do you think that would? Because it's neutral. It's kind of hard to manipulate it when it has no charge. Okay. You should be able to answer now. Wait, still waiting? Who is the scientist that determined the magnitude of electric charge? Not the charge to mass ratio, just the charge. Do you guys know who R. Chang is? He's who wrote your book. He wrote your book. <laughs> so it's not him. <laughs> Oh, and two are gone. So we only have 19. Okay. Let's see what we have for an answer. Ooh, pretty spread. Answer is B. It is Millikan. The only other one that studied the electron was Dalton, which would be, or not Dalton, Thompson, letter C, but Thompson found the charge to mass ratio. 
When J.J. Thompson discovered the electron, what physical property of the electron did he measure? <laughs> we just said it. It is B, charge to mass ratio. Hey, B. <laughs> it's temperature? <laughs> yeah, I can. I look and see. Stray. <laughs> you must have hit it wrong. <laughs> okay. Oh. Rutherford's experiment with the alpha, alpha particle scattering by gold foil established that what? Okay, who put A, B, C, D, E? Answer is A, yes. So he found that the protons were in that nucleus. He found the nucleus. Um, who found that electrons have a negative charge? J.J. Um, uh, Thompson. Now, Millikan found the actual charge, but J.J. Thompson found the electron. So he found that it was negative. Um, yeah. So. Oh, and that's it. You guys can put your <laughs> way.